guys, my name is Callie, and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Now, I've taken a little bit of a break from the Rose Etudes recently. Um, just needed to do something a little different. Um, but here and there over the next few months, I'm just going to sprinkle a few Rose Etude videos here and there. And I'm going to try to put some more relevant tips in there for you guys so that even if you're not working on this particular Etude, um, or whatever one I'm, I'm talking about, you can take those concepts and apply them to other things that we're working on. Now, before I talk about um, some of the nitty gritty of this particular etude, I just wanna tell you guys about a couple of things. Now, first of all, if you've been following me over the past few months, you know I've been posting like crazy. And every Saturday morning, I have posted um, a, a little tip with um, a little etude or piece of music you can download and work on over the following week. And um, it's been going really well. Um, I've been throwing in tips about, you know, how to keep your jaw relaxed and little embouchure tips and um, finger exercises. And I think there's a seven day pinky challenge at one point too. So it's a lot of fun and you guys should definitely check that out if you haven't already. Now, a couple of other things that you all probably know about. I do give private lessons, so if you guys are interested, just go to the link below. Um, we do lessons online, or once it's safe to do so, we can do them in person if you're around uh, Chicago. Um, but they've been going really well so far, so if you're interested, just shoot me a message, and, and I'd love to work with anybody who, you know, is going to YouTube for answers to their problems. And I also have a Patreon page just for my YouTube channel. And all you gotta do is go on over there and you can choose one of the tiers. And this, this channel is, is made for the music education community to give lessons to people who maybe um, can't afford it right now or who um, just wants to have a little bit of a supplement to whatever they're working on in their band or in their current lessons or, or whatever. And so, um, you know, I'm only one patron away from doing a private live stream event for my patrons. Um, so be sure to get over there and sign up so you can be right there in the live stream whenever I do it. I Now, I do want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I am really appreciative of anything you guys are doing for me. Um, you know, watching my videos, sharing my videos, commenting, liking. So be sure to to spread the word about Callie's Clarinet Channel. Now, about this particular etude, I really um, only have a couple of suggestions for this. One is to make sure that, like everything you play, um, you try to tell a story through it. And it, this, this is, um, this is kind of like some kind of an internal struggle for, for the person who was playing this. And I try to imagine just communicating something more than just notes and on a page, but try to make it come out into the world and, and spread something more meaningful. And, you know, if you just exaggerate any sort of dynamic marking that you have, and it's okay to put a little rubato here and there too, um, then you can really make it come to life and become your own. Now, technically, um, I really wanted to do this little tutorial for a couple of things. So the if you kind of go throughout, you'll have um, you'll have these slurs going or, or um, legato going up to various high notes. So like, you know, in the third line, you've got this B flat going to a high D or a little further down, there's um, an octave leap from an F uh, top line F to a very high F. And so um, there are a couple of things you can do to make those transitions a little bit easier. One is to make sure you're using enough top lip on the top of the mouthpiece. That's gonna keep you from biting and it's gonna force you to use the right kind of air going directly at the reed. So make sure you're not biting. That's one of the big ones. But the best way to break a habit is to replace it with a new one. So instead of clamping down, try to make your top lip a bit more even in pressure with the top teeth. Now, I'm going to have an episode of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee uh, coming up that talks a little more in depth about that. And it'll give you guys a little bit um, of an etude to kind of practice that tip. 
And another thing you can do when you're when you're doing legato from like a lower register up to the altissimo is half hole, the half hole technique. And so, for example, like if you're you know going from like um, you know three lines from the bottom, that's pretty, that's potentially pretty traumatizing. Going from top line up to altissimo F. So if you really like this fingering for high um, F. You can do the half hole technique where you actually kind of slide your finger off and whoop, and you can get a really nice legato. Now, none, none of my teachers ever actually encouraged me to do this, so I honestly have never perfected that technique and I haven't really used it that much, but I do know people who have and you should definitely try it. Now, I actually prefer to um, modify my fingerings in a different way. So like, for example, doing that octave leap from top line up to very high up, I actually just like doing the uh, long fingering for high F, which is like this. So typically the normal fingering for F is like this. This is typically known as long F. And I love that fingering because it comes out so easily. And I think it also, doesn't have um, as, let's see, it doesn't pop quite as much. So perhaps it's not as projected as this one, um, but the sound quality of it, I think, can be very effective in something like this, where you have a crescendo and you don't want that high F to go all of a sudden. So the goal is to make that transition as smooth as possible. So play around with doing the half hole technique and if that doesn't work for you, try doing the long F. And lastly, the last tip I have for doing these legato fingerings or legato transitions is to just make sure you're playing with air that does not slow down. And that's the number one biggest problem, I think, with clarinet players. As soon as we start thinking about the notes and the buttons that we're pressing down, we, we slow down our air and we almost do this <gasps> sort of thing because we're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to play. <gasps> oh, it's a high note. And we, and we kind of slow down our air and almost, you know, do this fight or flight response and we hold it back. So just keep blowing air and it'll be fine. It'll all come out. Um, and in the next coming, in the next few weeks or a couple months, um, I'm gonna do a few more tutorials um, on the Saturday morning series about just other tips and things for improving the high range. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned. Um, I have a lot more content coming up, but I hope these tips help you guys polish up your etude number 11. But the biggest thing is to just make sure that you play this as expressively as possible. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you all Saturday. And as always, happy practicing.